Before I start, I'd just like to ask, how many of you are feeling okay? How many of you are feeling good? How many are feeling not so good? Okay. The three most deceptive words in this universe, after I love you, are I'm okay. So when people ask you, as they usually do, how are you doing? Everything all right? You okay? They're not really asking you. They're answering the question themselves. Everything okay? You all right? All they want you to do is say yes. Nobody wants to hear a no and then a sob story. Nobody has that kind of patience for anyone anymore. That's who we've become. That's humanity served gold. The problem with us is, we are too many people in one body. So there is this version of me right on the surface. The version of me that you see, you talk to, you hear. The tangible, convenient, conventional side of me. Then there is a second side of me, right under the skin beside my blue veins. The side of me that comes out when there's a minor cut, a small bruise, or in the wee hours of the morning when I'm four pegs down. The side of me that's a little less bold, a little less outspoken, slightly more vulnerable. The side of me that tells you that there is more to me than what meets the eye, but nothing more. Then there is a layer under that, and under that, and under that. Now, if you're not too exhausted and you peel the layers of my skin right down to the last one, you will find more than just blood and bones and tissues. You'll find a village of houses, most of them empty. Houses where people once lived. If you care to go inside one of them, you will see how there are still photo frames hung on the wall, how the plants in the backyard are still watered, how there's always food in the fridge. You'll find broken toys from an ancient childhood, a chest of unspoken words, broken promises, chipped dreams. On the table by the window, you'll find smeared ink blots from countless unsent and uncomplete letters. And you will think, someone definitely lives here. But they don't. They used to. They were here for a while. Then one day they just woke up, back and left. But I make sure the lights are working. There's running water in the taps and oh, no cobwebs. What if they return? Now, if you walk a little ahead, you'll come across a graveyard and you'll be sombered by the expanse. It's huge. It's bigger than the houses. This graveyard is where I've carried people on my shoulders and lit their pyres. If you happen to see a burning body there, you will know how noisy cremations can be. The sound of their laughter, the sound of our arguments, the sound of muffled sobs, the sound of joy, the sound of their footsteps as they walked away. Everything just combines into one and it's the loudest noise you've heard. But no, no. If you do not see a burning body there and all you see is a pile of ash and dead leaves and twigs and charred bones, you will know that the silence that follows the noise is louder than the noise itself. Now, if you walk over those dead leaves across the graveyard, you will come across an ocean. This ocean is the deepest part of me. This ocean is where all the other layers merge and combine. This ocean is where the ashes drown into. This ocean is where I'm born and I'm reborn. This ocean is where I die and I die again. This ocean is me. I ebb, I rise up to the moon, I retreat, I retract. My current pulls you in, my froth lets you go. I am the beginning, I am the end, I am everything that comes in between. Far at the horizon, you will see a storm approaching. I am the calm before the storm. I am the storm. I am the havoc that's left behind. When you peel the layers of my skin, you will find a massacre. So don't ask me if I'm okay because I'm not. Don't ask me if I'm okay because if you ask me, I'll say yes, it's a reflex. Don't ask me if I'm okay unless you want to take a dip with me in that ocean. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.